Welcome and thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is Amanda Jadro and I'm a Portfolio Analyst with Tricom. As a financial solutions provider to the staffing and consulting industry, it is our philosophy to be an active member in the staffing industry by staying abreast of the ever-changing marketplace. For that reason, Tricom was pleased to launch the Industry Insider webinar series designed to share our expert knowledge and resources with our fellow staffing industry colleagues. One of our core values is to build relationships and become a leading resource to the staffing and consulting firms nationwide. Our presenters today are Mary Jo Heim and Lauren Burkholz. Mary Jo, the Director of Accounting, came to Tricom in 1996 and was promoted to controller in 1998. Mary Jo is a certified public accountant and a certified payroll professional. Mary Jo is also a member of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Wisconsin Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Mary Jo and her team of four certified accountants have nearly a half century of combined staffing industry accounting experience. Her clients rely upon her accounting knowledge and expertise for financial preparation and guidance. Lauren became a member of Tricom Funding's accounting department in 2012. Lauren received a bachelor's degree in business administration and a master's degree in accounting from the University of Wisconsin Whitewater shortly before joining the Tricom team. Lauren's research and knowledge of payroll tax credits has helped in the development of Tricom's Work Opportunity Tax Credit Program. In today's Industry Insider webinar, Mary Jo and Lauren will discuss work opportunity tax credits, including the history of WOTC, WOTC program requirements, target groups, applying for WOTC, how the credit is calculated, and TRICOM's work opportunity tax credit program. By the end of the session, you'll see just how easy it can be for your staffing firm to reduce their tax liability by using work opportunity tax credits. If you have questions during the presentation, please utilize the chat feature located on the right toolbar. After the presentation, there will be time for questions and an opportunity for you to give us your feedback on today's webinar by completing a short exit poll. With that, I will turn the floor over to Lauren, who will begin the, with the history and target groups. So what exactly is the Work Opportunity Tax Credit, or WASI, as it is commonly referred? The Work Opportunity Tax Credit provides incentives to employers that hire individuals from certain target groups, which we will discuss in a minute. WOTC encourages employers to hire those groups that may have a more difficult time finding employment in order to shift these groups from economic dependency to self-sufficiency. WOTC was developed in 1996 as an incentive to employ individuals with significant barriers to employment. Since its existence, WOTC has been set to expire nine different times, but has always been renewed. There were four times that the credit actually did expire, but each time it was eventually renewed and the credits were retroed back to cover any period of expiration. Therefore, since 1996, the credit has been available for all periods. As you can see by this timeline, each time the credit was set to expire, it was instead extended. If the credit was not extended until a date after the credit had expired, the extension allowed for retroactive credits, meaning the employer could receive credits from the expiration period. Currently, WOTC is set to expire at the end of this year. However, as history shows, we are confident it will be renewed. How do you know if this credit is available to you? The Work Opportunity Tax Credit is available for both nonprofit and for-profit organizations. However, there are limitations to the credit non-profit or tax-exempt employers can receive. A non-profit employer may only receive a credit for the veteran target group, while a for-profit employer may receive a credit for any target group. To qualify for the credit, employees may not be a re relative or dependent of an owner, they may not be a majority owner, or they may not be a self-employed individual. Now we will discuss the different target groups within WOTC. What is a target group? 
A target group is a group of people sharing a common characteristic or set of characteristics which a particular government policy or agency seeks to assist. Currently, there are nine target groups an employee might fall into. Included are veterans, short-term temporary assistance for needy families, or TANF recipients, long-term TANF recipients, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP recipients, Designated Community Residents, Vocational Rehabilitation Recipients, Ex-Felons, Supplemental Security Income Recipients, and Summer Youth Employees. Now we will go through specific details as to how to identify certain target groups based on their definitions, characteristics, and requirements for each group. The first target group we will discuss is the veteran target group. To be considered a veteran eligible for WOTC, he or she must have served on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces for more than 180 days or have been discharged from active duty for a service-connected disability, and the employee must not have ended active duty service within the last 60 days if they were active for more than 90 days. The purpose of this requirement is to put unemployed veterans to work. Unlike other WOTC target groups, veterans have subcategories based on each person's particular situation coming into employment. These will become important later on when we discuss maximum credits a veteran may receive. The subgroups in this category include veterans who receive SNAP benefits, veterans who are entitled to a compensation for a service-connected disability, or veterans who are unemployed. The next target group is TANF recipients. Temporary Assistance for Needy Families provides cash assistance to low-income families with dependent children while they strive to become self-sufficient. This is often referred to as welfare. TANF recipients can fall under one of two WOTC target groups, short-term and long-term. The reason we differentiate between short-term and long-term here is that there are different lengths of time the credit can be taken based on how long a recipient has been on TANF. To qualify under the short-term TANF group, the employee must have received TANF benefits for any nine-month period during the 18-month period ending on the hiring date. Long-term TANF is a little more complicated. An employee must have received TANF benefits for at least 18 consecutive months ending on the hiring date or received TANF benefits at least 18 consecutive or non-consecutive months after August 5, 1997 and has a hiring date not more than two years after the end of the earliest 18-month period after August 5, 1997. We have provided a few examples to help explain this last qualification. In each example, the new employee was hired on January 1, 2013. In the first example, the employee is eligible because the employee received the benefits for 22 consecutive months, which is more than the 18 months required, and after 18 months of receiving the benefits, they are within two years of the hiring date of January 1, 2013. In the second example, the employee is not eligible because the employee received 22 consecutive months of TANF, but at the end of the first 18 months, they are not within the two years of the hiring date. In the third example, the employee is eligible. The employee received a total of 20 non-consecutive months beginning on January 1, 1998. On February 1, 2011, the employee has received a total of 18 months of TANF. They are eligible because this date is within two years of the hiring date. In the last example, the employee is not eligible since they received 18 non-consecutive months by January 1, 2008, which is not within two years of the hiring date. The next target group is SNAP, or Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program recipients. Most people know this as food stamps. This program is the largest emergency feeding program. The SNAP program provides financial assistance for purchasing food to low and no income people in the United States. In order to be eligible for WADSI, 
The person must, have, must be between 18 and 39 years old and receive SNAP benefits or be a member of a family that receives SNAP benefits. They must either have been receiving the benefits for the six months leading up to the hire date, or they must have received the benefits for at least three months, three of the last five months ending on the hiring date. The next target group is the designated community resident. A designated community resident is an 18 to 39 year old who lives within a federally designated empowerment zone or rural renewal county. An empowerment zone is a highly distressed urban or rural community. These zones are continuously changing based on current economic circumstances. For example, after Hurricane Katrina, residents living in areas affected by, the, by Katrina became part of an empowerment zone. Currently, there are 67 cities and counties in the United States that are considered to be empowerment zones. A rural renewal county is a county in a rural area that lost population during the five-year periods, five periods of 1990 through 1994 and 1995 through 1999. Currently, there are 408 counties located in 32 states. For more information or to see where these areas fall within the United States, please visit the website provided on this slide. Two other target groups include vocational rehabilitation referrals and ex -felons. A vocational rehabilitation referral is an individual with a disability who completed or is completing re rehabilitative services. However, to qualify for WATSI, these services must be or have been completed by either a state certified agency, an employment network under the Ticket to Work program, or the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. An ex-felon is someone who has been convicted of a felony. To qualify for WATSI, this individual must have been hired less than one year after the conviction or release from prison. The next target group is recipients of supplemental security income. SSI is a federal income supplement program that is funded by general tax revenues. This program is designed to help aged, blind, and disabled people who have little or no income by providing cash to meet their basic food, clothing, and shelter needs. To be eligible for WATSI, the individual must be or have been a recipient of SSI benefits for any time within 60 days prior to the date of hire. And the final WATC target group is a summer youth employee. For 2013, to be eligible for WATC, the individual needs to be a 16 or 17 year old working for an employer between May 1st and September 15th and live in an empowerment zone. Now that we've explained a bit about the history of WATSI and given descriptions of various target groups, we will explain the process of receiving WATSI credits. Profit organizations receive their WATSI credits as part of their annual corporate tax returns, thus limiting their income tax, whether they're LLCs, S-Corps, or C-Corps. Nonprofit organizations can receive their credits by either requesting a check or receiving a credit on their quarterly payroll tax forms. The first step to receiving the credit is to get a certification from the state verifying that the employee in question is indeed a member of one of the targeted groups. This is done by filing an individual characteristics form, an ICF, with the state within 28 days from the date of hire. There are a number of questions in the form that will assist the state in verifying the employee as a member of the targeted group. The employee will also have source documents that will need to be sent to the state along with the form. The employee will need to sign the IRS Form 8850, certifying the information they have presented to you. Once the employee is certified, additional IRS forms must be completed to receive the credit. These are the source documents required for state approval. Each represents some type of document proving that the employee is indeed a member of the targeted group. This information will be sent to the state along with the ICF form. Veterans will need to present either discharge papers, letters of separation, or a letter from Veteran Affairs. TANF and SNAP recipients will need to present benefit histories, case number documentation, or a letter from an authorized individual describing the benefits and the time they were received. 
Designated community residents will need to provide a, either a driver's license, a utility bill, lease papers, or some other documentation stating that they truly live in the empowerment zone. Vocational rehabilitation recipients will need either the agency contract or a letter with an agency stamp stating the benefits were provided. Veterans will need to get a letter from Veterans Administration. Ex-felons will need to provide either a statement or contact information from their parole officer, correctional institute records, or court records. Supplemental security benefit recipients need to provide either SSI records, an SSI contract, or some type of evidence of SSI benefits. Summer youth will need to provide either a birth certificate, a driver's license, or school ID, or a work permit, any information that will confirm their age and the fact that they live in the empowerment zone. Once you have the ICF form and have received the source documents, this information must be forwarded to the appropriate State Department of Labor and Workforce Development. The range of approval or disapproval for this certification is between 60 to 90 days. The state may have questions on the application and may contact you for further information. Once the certification is received, this employee should be identified so you're able to track their hours, the number of hours of work. So how is the credit calculated? The credit is available for a one-year period. The employee must work over 120 hours to receive any credit. If the employee works over 120 hours but less than 400 hours, then 25% of the employee's wages can be taken into consideration for the credit. If the employee works over 400 hours, 40% of the employee's wages can be taken into consideration for the credit. For long-term TANF employees, the credit is available for a two-year period. Again, if the employee works less than 120 hours, there is no credit. For the first year, if the employee works over 120 hours but less than 400, you receive 25% of the credit for all wages. If the employee works over 400 hours, you can claim 40% for the first year. For the second year, if the employee works over 120 hours but less than 400, you can receive the 25% credit again. But if the employee works over 400 hours in year two, you can receive a credit equal to 50% of the second year wages. Nonprofit organizations can currently only receive WASI credit for employing veterans. If the veteran works less than 120 hours, there is no credit. 120 to 399 hours, your credit can be up to 16.25% of the veteran's qualified first year wages. If the veteran works over 400 hours, up to 26% of their first year wages can be taken as a credit. In addition to the qualified wage percentages I mentioned earlier, each individual can only receive a maximum credit as stated. A veteran must be part of one of these additional groups to receive a credit. As you can see, a veteran can be a member of more than one group, which allows them to receive additional credit amounts. If a veteran is also a SNAP recipient, you can receive up to $2,400. If you hire a veteran who has been unemployed for over six months, you can receive a credit of up to $5,600. If you hire a disabled veteran who has been unemployed for over six months, you can receive a credit up to $9,600. Again, your initial credits are based off the previously mentioned percentage of, percentage of wages and then are further limited by the maximum allowable credits in each qualifying category. Short-term TANF, you can receive $2,400 maximum. Long-term TANF, you can receive $9,000 over the two-year period. SNAP recipients, you can receive $2,400. Designated community residents, $2,400. Vocational rehabilitation referral, $2,400. Ex-felons, $2,400. Supplemental security income recipients, $2,400. And youth employees can receive a credit of up to $1,200. These credits are limited, but as you can see, if you have a number of qualified employees working for you, these credits can add up to substantial tax credits. Tracking needs to be done generally on a quarterly basis to be able to monitor where each qualified employee is in regards to hours worked. At the end of the year, each Certified employee will require individual calculations to determine credits. A Form 5884 or 5884C for nonprofits will need to be completed. For profit companies receive their credit with their corporate tax return. If your tax entity is a flow through to a personal income tax return, the credit flows to that as well. Nonprofits can receive their credit via a check, 
from the IRS or receive credits on their 941 quarterly payroll form. I'm sure this seems like a large amount of tracking and paperwork, but for those of you who are Tricom payroll processing clients, this process is much more streamlined. You will need to fill out only two forms. The Form 8850 will need to be filled out and signed by the employee, and Tricom has developed a one-page questionnaire that can be gone through with new hires to determine if they qualify into any of the target groups. Tricom will do the remainder of the work and send you the completed 5884 forms for you to give to your tax accountant. For more information on Tricom's WOTC credit program, feel free to contact me at Tricom. Thank you, Lauren and Mary Jo, for sharing your information. Um, we have gone ahead and put the references on the screen for anyone that would be interested in um, learning more about um, the Work Opportunity Tax Credit Program. It looks like we did have one question that came in, and the question was asking if you can go back in time to receive credits. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that the certification process requires you to have the certification submitted to the state within 28 days from the date of hire. So you have that 28-day window to go backwards if you hired someone within the last 28 days. And you can get this paperwork completed and send it to the state. It has to be postmarked 28 days after the date of hire. Doesn't look like we have any other questions that have come in. Um, I have gone ahead and put up both Lauren and Mary Jo's contact information. Please feel free to reach out to them if you had any other questions or were interested in learning more about Tricom's Work Opportunity Tax Credit Program. Um, I'd like to thank you all for joining us in today's webinar. And the recording of this webinar will be available on our website at tricom.com slash resources. Again, should you have any questions, please reach out to um, Lauren or Mary Jo. And watch for information on our next webinar session, which will be held on October 24th, entitled Get Out of the Com Commodity Rat Race, Build and Market a Killer Value Proposition. Thank you.